Okay, so let's start with the first trimester. So first trimester actually starts from week one to the end of week 12. It's actually calculated from the first day of your last menstrual period, or if you have irregular periods, it's calculated retrospectively using the crown rump length measurement of a first trimester scan. So as you can see, that's the little fetus there. So from the head to the crown to the rump, the butt over there. So this is how we measure the size of your... Okay, so just give you a vague idea of how big your baby is. So in week four, that's just when you've just missed your last period. So it's about the size of a poppy seed. At week eight is about the size of a kidney bean. And at week 12 is about the size of a lime. So your routine antenatal visits. So most people will ask, when should I schedule my first visit? Actually, the short answer is as soon as you know. Okay, especially if this is your first pregnancy or if you've had previous complications before. And this is basically for counseling and scheduling of appropriate tests and investigations. Okay, the next thing that's very important is folic acid. Okay, this, this is very important to take in the first trimester. This is to prevent um, major birth defects of the brain and spinal cord, also known as neural tube defects. So you take that all the way up to the 12th week. We generally look at your booking BMI just to see if you're in the high risk or low risk category and we can give you additional supplements and additional tests if, if you're out of this boundary. And also it's very important to calculate an accurate estimated due date in the first trimester. So what, what else do we have in the routine antenatal visits? So of course the routine antenatal blood tests, which includes a full blood count, infection screening such as hepatitis B, syphilis, HIV. We also check your blood type and rhesus status. So that's if you're negative or positive. We also screen for thalassemia and rubella. The ones in pink, we actually generally just do for the first pregnancy because they don't change later on. So if you've done this in your first pregnancy, you don't actually need to repeat it later on. We also recommend um, mummies get the flu vaccine as soon as possible because as we know, the flu affects mummies worse than a normal person. So we're in the high risk category if you're, if you're pregnant, because you, if you get the flu, you tend to have a more serious infection. Other optional things that we offer in the first trimester is the prenatal screening for common chromosomal conditions such as Down syndrome. So what I, the question I always get is, will I be able to see my baby on an ultrasound on my first visit? The answer is yes, probably. So I'll just go through a few of these pictures. So as early as week four, you can see something called the gestational sac. So this little black dot here, okay? And at week five, inside the gestational sac, you can see something called the yolk sac. This, this is quite obvious round thing inside the gestational sac. And by week six, you can actually even see the heartbeat within the fetus. So this little thing here is, a fetus. So this little beam thing here is a fetus. And you can actually sometimes see the heartbeat flicker. The best stage to scan and see things is actually at eight weeks. I call this the teddy bear stage, where you can actually see the fetus and it looks kind of like a baby. This is a very cute stage. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the do's and don'ts. Well, the very obvious thing, of course, is stop smoking if you already smoke. So this because so smoking will actually lead to things such as miscarriage, stillbirth, small baby, and preterm delivery. Uh, alcohol as well, um, need to stop that once you know you're pregnant, because this can cause neurodevelopmental problems such as learning difficulties, low IQ, hyperactivity, and low attention span. If you are so used to your one cup of coffee every morning, that's fine. Actually, as long as you limit it to 200 milligrams a day, which is about two cups of coffee, that's totally fine as well. And next, diet and food. So the most important thing in food is we have to avoid food that may contain Listeria monocytogenes. This is actually a bacteria found in a lot of great food. For example, sashimi, soft cheeses, blue cheese, um, truffles, and deli meats. So unfortunately, you have to give this up during pregnancy. Also, exercise regularly because keeping fit and healthy it helps ease your body through pregnancy and also delivery. 
Next thing, anybody who owns cats, try to avoid handling cat litter because the cat litter contains another bacteria called toxoplasmosis. And this can cause serious malformations in the baby and also preterm delivery. Also avoid excessive exposure to heat, such as the sauna, jacuzzi, or hot tub, because this can cause deformities of the spine and brain. Hair dye and many pedi generally safe. Okay, the hair dyes that we have nowadays is not, not an issue anymore. But maybe you can try to avoid gelish nail polish because we don't know the effects of the UV light on the fetus. Um, we talk about sex. Sex is actually fine during pregnancy unless you have a pre-existing condition, you have bleeding in pregnancy, or later on if you have a low-lying placenta or you have, your water bags have gone and your doctor has advised you not to have sex. But otherwise, it's totally okay to have sex during pregnancy. Okay. In the first trimester, these are some of the changes to expect. Of course, the common one would be nausea, motion sickness, you feel tired or fatigued, you have mood swings, be a little bit forgetful, you feel hot all the time, bloating, you start to have tingling and aching of the breast, and your breast and nipples start to change. But on the other hand, you, you may have this, what people say, a pregnancy glow, just look radiant all the time. So some people are lucky. So these are all actually due to hormonal changes. Sometimes the absent-mindedness is just because of hormonal changes coupled together with stress and preoccupation with the pregnancy and tiredness. So that's sometimes what happens. Okay, let's talk about the most important and common symptoms. So it's the nausea and vomiting in pregnancy, also known as morning sickness. But to mummies who have gone through this before, it's actually not morning sickness is actually throughout the whole day you can even have this nausea and vomiting which is quite common um so it actually co directly correlates with the hcg levels uh in your body so this is the pregnancy hormone levels and it starts at around six weeks it peaks around nine weeks and then it starts to taper down after 13 weeks but some people are lucky, they don't get it. Some people are unlucky and then it just goes on until the second trimester all throughout pregnancy, unfortunately. So these are some of the things that, you know, we can recommend. Eating cut fruits. From my personal experience, I feel cold cut fruits are the best. It just helps you just eat and accept it in your mouth. Ginger, candy. Um dry crackers, biscuits, this tend to help because you, you won't be really eating much apart from these. So these are the broad categories of medications that we do prescribe to our patients and it's generally safe in pregnancy if they find their nausea and vomiting unbearable. So the first category would be the anti-nausea medications, okay? Second category, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, is the antacids, this neutralized acids in your stomach. And the last category will be um, pills to block gastric acid secretion. So these are all generally safe in pregnancy and we do tend to prescribe them for mummies who have really, really bad nausea and vomiting. Another cartoon. So the constant vomiting and not eating can lead to gastritis, which will make nausea and vomiting worse. So it's just a bad cycle. So we really have to try to get mummies to eat. And if they can't eat, then we prescribe them medications. Okay, let's go on to the red flags in the first trimester. So things to look out for would be things like abdominal pain, vaginal bleeding. Okay, this could be a sign of miscarriage, although saying that bleeding can be very, very common in the first trimester, and it doesn't mean that you'll go on to have a miscarriage. Uh, other symptoms include chest pain, shortness of breath, calf pain or swelling, or a severe headache. This points to the symptoms of blood clots, okay? So this is a, uh, blood clots tend to be more common in pregnancy. 